deer walking. Back in there, looks like it's all iced up. Pull it over here to this thermostat. My condensed unit right here. As you can see, we've got ice going to the compressor. So what I'm gonna do is just shut off the condensed unit right now. Uh, let the coil defrost while I'm just checking everything else out. I'm gonna look at the defrost clock and all that good stuff. So this is an older unit. Uh, it's got an original compressor, I think, from 2003, it's R22. Uh, I'm just kind of visually inspecting everything. I'm noticing that uh, the defrost clock was very hard to turn, and it also says the wrong time. It's like 8:30 in the morning. It says like 9 8 9 p.m. So more than likely, we're gonna have a problem with the defrost clock. But I have a feeling from the way that it was frozen up, it wasn't the whole coil. It was only half of the coil. I bet you anything we're going to be low on charge also. So I'm going to get all my tools. We're going to get the evaporator coil defrosted. And then once we do that, we'll diagnose from there. So I shut the fans up just so I can talk real quick. See how we have ice forming on the inside of that evaporator, but it's not all the way. See how it's not going down to the bottom. It's only half the coil. That to me is an indication of a bigger issue than just a defrost clock, but we'll see. You can see they've got a large ice accumulation here. And then from the looks on the other side, this has been like this for a while. Look at that. That's been happening for a very long time. That doesn't happen overnight that bad around the expansion valve. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fans on and while I'm getting everything ready, we're just gonna let this thing air defrost and then I'll turn it off and use the water hose once I get it. Everything. I've showed this before, but always gonna take time running your hoses so that way the customer's not tripping over them trying to be conscious of them and then always roll with the drip loop coming off the moxie so you get a better look once I get the fan blades and fan guards off I'm gonna go ahead and pull those fan motors out too I always pull everything out when I defrost that way you don't compromise the motors or anything and then also while I've got the guards and blades off I went ahead and set them down here and I've got them soaking in a degreaser so that way we can get those cleaned up also because they never get the opportunity to clean those, so always take the chance when you can. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the fan motors out and then we'll start defrosting the ice a little bit at a time, nice and slow with the hot water. That way it doesn't leak down into the box. I'm not going to make a mess at all. I'm just going to take our time. So I got the uh, fan motors all out and you can see the abnormal icing pattern. Definitely something going on there. So we're going to start using the hot water hose to defrost and this stuff. Notice how we're just going a little bit at a time because we don't want to overflow the drain. We don't want water to start dripping out of the coil. See, I got a drip so I stop. It's, it's a slow process. It's not a race. Not making a mess, period. So as I'm defrosting, just because the coil's clear, it's not clear of ice on the back but I'm continuing to defrost from the front side, just nice and slow and steaming all the ice off off the back. There's no need to get onto the back. If I just steam it from the front, eventually it's just all gonna fall off as one big chunk and it's already loose. I'll kind of swing you guys around so you can see. Okay, so it's kind of one big giant chunk, but it'll fall off in pretty big chunks as we're doing it. So just keep on going, but there's no reason to hose from the back and make a mess. Keep doing it from the front nice and slow. See by steaming it, like I said, I was able to get everything to just pull right off. No difficulty. It just kind of fell off and I just grabbed it. Still have ice on this side, so we're just going to continue to defrost nice and slow. You can see how dirty the bottom half of the coil is. It's more than likely this thing being this dirty was part of the reason it's plugged. Part of the reason it iced up. Obviously up top, when you pull the ice off, a lot of the dirt comes with it. But yeah, this thing's filthy, so we'll get it cleaned up. So I got my big fancy brush and some degreaser out. And I've sprayed it on the back of the coil and the inside of the coil. And I'm just letting it soak, and then we'll give it another rinse. 
I've been pulling big chunks. See all that black shit down there, stuff down there? Bunch down in the coil. We gotta make sure we rinse it all, get it all out of the drain too. So it doesn't plug it out. So we're just moving along. Normally when you defrost, you can avoid getting water below the coil. But if you can't, or in my case, since I'm having to degrease and pull that lint off, I put a pan down here to catch all the water. So that way I can blast it. Can see I'm foaming up like crazy right now, so. Okay, so for the most part, I've gotten it cleaned out really good. You can see light through the coil very well. Um, there's still a couple little goobers inside there, but they can only do so much. Light's coming through really well. Um, I clean the back of the coil. Basically rinse this thing with degreaser a bunch of times. So I'll give you guys a view here. Much better. Brushed it, cleaned it all the way through. Nice and good. I'll give it one more brush just to get those last little goobers off there. That's it, so we're looking good. So now, I have cleaned the ice from the electrical section, but I still have to finish the ice in the expansion valve section. Always gotta make sure you check those sections. So we'll get all that out now. Got my fan blades and fan guards all nice and cleaned up. As good as possible, don't gotta be perfect. Coil drain pan for the most part's cleaned up. There's a few little guys in there we'll get out. Wanna make sure you flush water down there, make sure it drains. Coil's nice and clear of ice, nice and clear of dust and dirt. Expansion valve section's all cleaned up, so now we're gonna assemble the fan motors, get it running, and then troubleshoot from there. Um, notice something that I did not adjust the thermostat, I left it where it was set when I got here. Um, if you do adjust it to defrost the coil, you wanna make sure you mark it, that way you can put it right back where it was, that way you can verify if the thermostat is working properly. So you don't want to go in there and just start twisting on it without knowing what you're doing because that could be the problem and by twisting on it you might solve the problem and then you'll just never know you know what it was so usually i don't adjust on those this time i went up and shut the condensing unit off so that way it could air defrost but if i do adjust the thermostat i mark it before i adjust it so i've got the system back on and running we're going to uh, go upstairs put some gauges on this guy and evaluate the system, see where it's turning on and off, and check the evaporator superheat. I've got a uh, suction temperature clamp on the suction line down here, and then also have a uh, pressure probe on the suction line superheat port down here. And then I've got my uh, air thermometer right there, so we're just going to watch the box come down to 10. Okay, so I'm currently pumping this system down. Now, I tried to close the receiver valve, and uh, it, it's busted, and it's leaking gas really bad out of the valve so I have the cap tightened on and you see when it, it starts just spraying everywhere that's too much gas so I can't use that to pump down I don't like doing this but I'm using the liquid line solenoid valve to pump it down right now what I need to do is I need to see the receiver level okay because this guy has bubbles in the sight glass right now and uh, because this unit has a headmaster I have no way of knowing exactly how much gas is missing out of this system so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put at the maximum amount of refrigerant in this system and that's three quarters of the receiver. You never want to pump down a receiver past 80% basically. So if I fill this up to three quarters liquid level, then I know I have the right, the maximum amount of refrigerant for this uh, particular receiver. And I happen to know that that's enough gas for this system. Um, I have got confirmation from the customer that they are going to want to replace this equipment. So we just need to get them up and running. So I need to get the refrigerant filled up and then uh, we're gonna go from there so I'm just waiting for it to pump down so I've got the system pumped down and what I did was I took uh, you have to be very careful about this I took a heat gun and I just did two passes up and down you got to be careful because we have a soft plug on this receiver right here did two passes up and down and then I run my fingers along here and you feel for where the point where it gets really hot and that's the end of your liquid level so basically it came up to right here and it got really hot so this means that my liquid comes up to here so I need to fill this guy up to the three-quarter mark okay so now I've got it charged up and this is my liquid level in this receiver now so I was down here and I've gotten it up to here now so when I run my finger here all of a sudden it gets burning hot right here but then once I move down it's nice and you know warm I should say 
So we've got the maximum amount of refrigerant in here. While I'm testing that, I'm noticing that we've got a weak valve on the compressor also. It won't pump down past seven PSI. And it just sits there and runs and runs and runs and doesn't go any lower. So that just adds to the mess. So this unit has a refrigerant leak. It's got a compressor going bad, needs a new receiver. Um, the coil's starting to deteriorate. Uh, like I said, the customer already knows they want to upgrade this equipment. So Okay, so nothing too complicated. This was a service call on a beer walk-in that was iced up. And I found that the unit was had a very dirty evaporator coil and was also low on refrigerant. Again, as I always do, looking at the big picture, I found that the compressor has a weak suction valve. It was an R22 system, and it had multiple leaks, and the evaporator coil was starting to deteriorate. So I went to the customer with a big picture diagnosis, and they actually decided to go ahead and replace the equipment. This customer is very proactive with replacing their equipment. So uh, they went ahead and approved it, and they've already ordered the equipment. And once it arrives, we'll go out and install it. That was pretty much it. Um, I did give a little tip on checking the winter charge on these systems. You always want to pay attention to the winter charge if the unit has a headmaster. So on this particular one, because it was low on refrigerant and I had no idea of knowing how low it was, I just went ahead and put the maximum amount of refrigerant into the system. This doesn't work in every case because if you have a giant supermarket system, you could potentially add a lot of extra refrigerant. So you know, you need to kind of know your equipment and know your systems. I knew that a three quarter of the receiver on this system was perfect and it wasn't overcharged dramatically. So that works for us here. Okay. So you just kind of need to evaluate what works for you and your situation. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And also uh, pay attention to the show notes. Um, and popping up right now, you'll see my YouTube channel and a few other people's YouTube channels that I recommend. So check them out. Give those guys some uh, feedback. Consider subscribing to their channels. And we'll see you guys on the next one.